So I'm getting ready for another table to make another table. Same size as the other one. 15 and a half by 47 and a half. And this will be a sofa table, you know, at the end of a sofa, not not a not a coffee length. So it'll be 30 inches high, and I've, I've pre-coated the wood. And um, these are the colors I'm going to be using. It's gorgeous, 24 karat folk art, deco art gold, uh, mica powder. These are the colors. Mm 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 mm, delicious. And these are the brands. So have it have a big white made up for the cushion and it's going to have a, be a swipe with a cell activator of uh, carbon black. Stay tuned. Okay, we're starting with the pour this morning. Whoopie doo. And I'm going to put my cushion down first. This has been pre-coated last night. This is another table pour. It's going to be a uh, 15 and a half by 47 and a half. It's going to be like a sofa, back of the sofa table type of thing. So here we go. Paints are all ready and stirred. Okie doke. After we put this cushion, it's called a cushion, it's your base for your flow paints to flow into. They have to have something to flow into so they don't get stuck on the dry part. Okay, that looks good. This is a combination of house paint and Floetrol. The Floetrol makes the paint a flow paint. Okay, so I'm going to spread this out a little bit with the stick. Just spread it out to the corners. It doesn't have to be actually right now. I have my sides taped, by the way. I'm not going to have the flow go over the side. Four paintings I usually do, but this one I want it to be a solid color on the side, so I've taped the sides of this table, board, frame. Okay. This is going nice and smoothly across with just a spatula. Just using a regular kitchen spatula. to this edge here. It is taped on the side so hopefully that tape is doing what it's supposed to do. Otherwise I'll have to repaint the sides and that's okay too. That's okay too. For now I used regular blue um, painter's tape, masking tape. And press the masking tape in with, um, I forgot what they call it, it's a hard burner. It just uh, helps it to stay tight against the wood. Anything hard will work actually. I use, I use the pastry roller too. That'll push the tape hard against the wood too. So avoid leaking, hopefully. Okay, so I'm in a box, except for the end here. And on the end here I have um, um, what do you call them, bed pads to catch any leftover paint that goes over the side. Because pour painting is quite messy. Okay, I'm going to put this spatula down for now. Might use it again. 
And I'm going to start by putting at this. There you go. Red and then yellow. I think the next color was blue. Uh huh. I think I wanted to do blue next. This is this beautiful blue. There's no silicone in these paints. Next will be, let me just go check. I wrote it down the order, but I put it over here. yellow green, red, blue, I'm going to put the green instead of the orange next, I just think it'll do better with that blue, green, and I'm probably going to repeat these colors again, maybe not necessarily in the same order. Instead of yellow, I used gold. And I'm going to use that dark green and then repeat the colors. That's pretty just the way it is. <laughs> This is a metallic green. It has some beautiful glitter in it. I'm going to start with, I'm going to put the blue in again. I don't want it going off the edge yet. I'm going to put the rosy color again. I'll just keep repeating this till I get to the bottom here. I don't want it to go to the bottom or if you have the edge. It might not be quite balanced. Rosy red. Get all the paint out of there. Okay. And I'm going to put the emerald green again. Nope, I got it too close. Let's see. Hmm, I divided this up pretty good. Orange is closed. Oh, the yellow. Or the gold. Yeah, the gold. And the gold, I'm actually going to put some of it in between. Here and there. Just want a little bit more of that metallic gold showing up in the piece. So with pores, 
you're really never sure what's going to happen. And this is my CA, which is a activator. It's considered an activator. It's got some uh, wood stain, a few drops of wood stain in it, wood stain uh, protector, sealer, and Floetrel and carbon black golden uh, paint from a tube. It should be a little thicker than the rest of the paints. So now the exciting part. I'm gonna put this at the end and then swipe up. And I'm gonna swipe with this tool here, this long tool. Put that in here. Save some of it to swipe again. We've got a long way to go here. Here we go. Right off the edge. Woohoo, it is making cells. It's making a lot of cells. And because we've got a long way to go, I'm going to put another one through here. And another one through here. And use a smaller spatula. Maybe not. Okay. So, and this will be tilted. This is going to be tilted. I know, it looks pretty cool the way it is, but it has, some of the paint has to be tilted off, it has to be. Hmm. This go up. And through here. Okay. Now if I don't like this, I will just, well, it's making some great cells. I think, don't think I'm not going to like it. It's parts of it I think I don't like it right here, but I can change that right now. Just pull this a little bit. Okay, now this is going to be tilted, so you do have to take that into consideration. But it's not going to remain the same. Wow. I'm going to just let the cells develop for a few minutes. Take you in for a close-up so you let you see what's happening. Take you in for a close up while the cells are magnificently developing. Wow. Love it. But like I said, it's going to be tilted. Not too much. I don't think I put 
so much paint on here that I have to worry about it cracking if I leave too much paint on the top. But what I want happening right now is cells. <laughs> And while it's still developing, heat the paint up with the torch. And that will, whoa, look what happened there. I'm sure I could do some more wrecking. What they call wrecking. Do some of this. Love, love, love the colors. But like I said, some of this, a lot of this, Maybe not a lot, but quite a bit. It's going to go off the sides. Hopefully I can preserve some cells like this. When you're doing this with the torch, keep it moving or you burn the paint. What it does is heat the paint up, bring up more cells, and bust bubbles. Air bubbles. Wow. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop this for now. I think I've done enough torching. Maybe a little bit more so we can get a little more cells up. I love what happened here. Dragging that cake spatula through there. This is cool. It's happening in this corner. Okay, so I'm going to stop this for a minute. So we did some, uh, I've got my regular camera, so I'm using my GoPro camera. A um, lot of cells have come up. I like it so much with the, um, what happened down here with the running the spatula through that I just might Run a little bit that of that more through there. Uh, let me use my smaller spatula to just pull this through here a little bit. There you go. Just wanted to come down the edge here. Come over differently. Same thing here. up a little bit here. So I'm going to use this here. Just make a few little more fine lines through here. Same thing here. Just make a few more fine lines coming through and help the Design a little bit more. Although, like I said, the design is going to change. Getting a few little swirlies in there. Here, where it's a little boring, I'm going to take that and make a few little swirlies in here too. Same thing in here, I like this, so I'm going to put this little bit of a swirly in here. Just let that come out of there like that. Wow, wish I didn't have to tilt it. Looks beautiful. Go through there. It was cool. So let's take. I don't want to touch those cells. A little boring here, so I'm going to just pull that and bring it down like that. And I'm going to take this green and 
and swirl it out that way. And get this red at the edge. Making it cover what the white didn't cover before. it anywhere else. Hmm. Kind of cool. It's really cool. I'm going to tilt that way first. So let me get my cups out of the way. Get all this out of the way. Push it all the way back here. Put them all the way in the back. You can't see it, but I'm pushing to the back of the box all my stuff here, all my cups, because the pour is going to come over the sides and it'll mess everything up if I don't move them out of the way. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm going to keep my spatulas handy. Love the colors. Okay, here we go. I hope you can see it. Need to let some of that go off and then let it come back. Let it go off the other way. I'm going to catch it on, right on these, get these rocks that I have here. Collect some of the <laughs> some of the pour. So we'll have poured on rocks. wasting that paint. Okay. So I'm going to tilt it now the other way. It's getting pretty dramatic. A little drama, darling. You see, how much do I tilt? Well, I don't want everything to go off. Some of it has to, and it also will stretch. Whoa, it'll stretch some of the what's going on. When it's moving slower, that's good. That means I'm tilting enough of paint off that I don't have to worry about it cracking. Wow. That's a dynamic pour, folks. Dynamic pour. I'm going to let some of it go off that way, too. Just need to get some paint off the top. I didn't put a whole lot of paint, so that's good. I won't have to stretch so much. I guess you can see that in the camera. What's happening down at this end is glorious, the stretching. Stretching isn't necessarily a bad thing. Woohoo. Woohoo. Now I'm going to stretch it a little bit this way. So far, I'm loving this pour. Stretching this end a little bit more. I don't want the other end to go off completely. Wow. <laughs> oh my. I'm sorry I taped the ends actually, because it would have been great over the sides too. And it would have been. I'm pretty happy with this. It's not moving very much anymore. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Um, think a little bit this way more. Yeah, it's moving this way quite a bit. I'm loving the stretch and what it's doing, so I'm not upset with some of this going off the side because it looks like every time I stretch it, it gets more and more glorious. 
And more and more glorious is what I want. Okay. This is stretched enough. I think it needs to come back this way a little bit more. I'll take in for a close-up soon. Do want it to stretch that way a little bit more. Let this grow a little bit more. Wow. It's gorgeous, people. The only thing I'm not too crazy about is a little bit too much of this black. But I might just put something through there and swipe it through. This is gorgeous. These cells are just, the cells are fantastic. And it seems like the more you push and shove and stretch, I'm going to put it this way a little bit more. Let this stretch down a little bit more. And we get a little more paint off that way too. come off just a little bit more. Okay, good. Bring it back. Oops. Got off its feet. Let me get it back on its feet. Ah, that, that's why you should use tacks instead. Okay. Okay, it's back on its feet. That stretch, that green, that red, which is good. I think I need to let it come this way a little bit more. That way a little bit more again. And it's not moving very much. That's good. That means there's enough paint off that it's not going to crack. And it's really making this end stupendous. Stupendous, and this is still beautiful. I'm liking the composition a lot. Liking the composition a lot. Whoa, and there's go up the stand again. That's not good, because it has to dry level. Don't know why it's doing that. Okay, but we can fix it very easily. It's just yogurt cups on the bottom.
Okay, so we're getting ready to put the legs in. Oops, here's the legs. They'll be going on the corners. Just like that. So I'll get ready to put the legs in. So we got the first leg in, and it was quite a challenge because it's right on the edge, and I wanted to be um, right on the edge. And I've had to mostly do it by hand because these legs are in the way of any drill. So this is the last one to go in. And this little screwdriver is working great. At the dollar store. Perfect. When you have to screw in. One leg in. Nice and sturdy. Nice and sturdy. One leg in and three more to go. Okay, putting another leg in. I think you can see that, yeah. So we're pre drilling first. makes it easier for the screw to go in.
Well, here it is. Ta da! There's a sofa table or a foyer table, wherever you want to put a table. Beautiful hairpin legs, it stands 30 inches high. It is 15 and a half inches wide by 47 and a half inches length. Perfect for behind a sofa. And it's not just a table, it is a painting. It is a piece of art. You won't ever see anything like this in the store. It's been doubled, coated with epoxy. I wouldn't put anything hot on it, but I don't think you'd do that with a sofa table anyway. But it can take a vase or whatever other stuff you want to put on it. It's got double epoxy on the top. The bottom is coated with uh, triple polyurethane. The legs are very sturdy and strong. Very steady and strong. Strong table. That creature of me at Halo.com know if you are interested in this piece or uh, PM me or call me at 513-309-7664. It is available now and uh, it will be $600 plus tax. Thanks. No shipping. Sorry.